Okay, here's something of a show and tell of a uh, kinetic art project that I uh, kicked off a couple of months ago. Uh, three main stages in it, uh, proof of concept, uh, prototyping and uh, production. Uh, so uh, two months in, um, very much advanced into, well into the uh, proof of concept stage by uh, connecting up a range of different sensors and uh, been some process of experimenting with the, all the different uh, possibilities and then uh, starting to write software that uses those sensors and then uh, weaving it together into a, a creative whole. So uh, if it uh, didn't pass muster at this stage, then the whole concept uh, wouldn't work. But I'm pleased to say um, everything has worked really well and it's been a great process to, to go through to understand motors and sensors and everything else. And uh, you can see by the, the wiring here, everything is, is up to uh, <laughs> up to that uh, sort of stage where it looks a bit messy, um, but there's quite a lot of sense and, and logic in these things. There's um, two boards here uh, and a, two sets of 40 pins there, out of which everything happens, uh, electricals and uh, control. So this keyboard actually contains a uh, small computer called a Raspberry Pi. This is what one looks like just out on its own. And the key to the Raspberry Pi is that it has 40 pins which communicate to the outside world and you can connect sensors to it so information can come in and you can send the commands and controls out of it so you can tell motors what to do or whatever it is that, that, that you've connected up to it. So a very flexible, uh, powerful system and uh, the whole idea with making a, a mess uh, like this with the wires going everywhere is you can plug and unplug and get everything as you want it to make it functional first and then uh, you work on uh, the final um, version uh, much later down the track. So after that uh, little bit of introduction in terms of uh, the hardware, uh, we'll fire up the software and uh, we've got it to uh, run through a whole range of different um, initial uh, warming up uh, stages uh, before it gets into working uh, as intended. So here's where it will fire up a long LED strip. It'll give it a good run through, make sure that all the electricals are working. It'll do a series of test patterns that I've set up for it. And uh, that confirms that everything is uh, good for that. If it wasn't grounded correctly, you would see the lights it wouldn't be in the set pattern. There'd be randomness to it and so on. So that's a good indicator that all the connections are solid. And then I have a second set of LEDs. These are different from the others in that these are individually wired and then I can then place them anywhere in the artwork as I will. So that gives that a good, uh, good run. Then uh, it gives this motor a spin around, make sure that that works okay. Then this motor a spin around and that works okay. Then it'll wind up this motor and give that a spin around. It'll crank it up and then wind it down. And so everything will be put through its paces and you can see that it has all functioned and it's given the green light and now it's into a default uh, running mode and from here on it will then behave uh, according to you and uh, what happens in the artwork. So after the warm-up uh, process, it goes straight into its uh, default actions, which are to uh, restore the motor speed and other things to move around as uh, they are meant to do. So um, you don't have to do anything else from here. You could just let it run like that. But a, a very key point about what I'm doing is it, by including these electronics discreetly tucked away, you won't uh, see it too, too overtly, um, is for you to interact with it. And here's a, a key sensor that will allow us to use the hand to control, in this case, uh, motor speed. So you can see as I raise my hand and lower my hand, raise my hand, and lower it again, that will make that motor spin up and down according to uh, where I have my hand placed. And that's a key interactive component. And that's not the only thing that hand uh, gesture can do. Uh, there's actually six different parameters about this system that we can control. Uh, lighting, light intensity, patterns, interval uh, between pattern changes and 
and, and the whole tempo and nature of the mood, if you like, of this uh, art piece can be controlled with a, with a simple hand gesture. We actually have a few more options other than that, but that is at its most simplest. And then if you want to get more complex and have more control, I've also built in the methods for doing it. We'll take a bit of a browse and see what it's doing uh, on its own here. Um, it has a, this is a track selector. It's just using a simple arm at the moment pointing in different directions, but that will send balls running down shoots to each one of these four possibilities. Um, exactly which one it chooses depends on a couple of things. First of all, it's random chooser, but you can bias it towards one end or the other, again, with, with a simple hand gesture. And the art piece will be designed such that there are quiet sections and there are faster sections. And you could just simply say, well, I'd like a quiet one or you'd like a faster one with all the bells and whistles. And, and so being motor controlled um, and software controlled, um, it can respond and give you exactly what it is that you want to do. There are other things happening at the same time. This will be a ball lift. It's just got a rock at the moment giving it some load on the motor. But here's a switch that would be in a, in a bit of track. And when I press the switch, you'll see that opens and shuts. That's it, actually a gate or an iris to be exact. So when a ball runs over this little switch. So everything's happening on its own quite independently. Every time I press that, or whenever that happens to be, that motor will open and then it will uh, a separate timer will go to then close it automatically and of course we could just simply move our hand up and down we've got the LED lights going up and down just to give us some feedback um, that will be doing that all at the same time so a key part of this software design is that it does everything independently autonomously and in any kind of order so here's a fun little bit of uh, extra bling that I've added uh, just in the last uh, day or so um, as I approach it, it will then detect my presence and then uh, do a little light jig, <laughs> have a bit of a hello there, and as I move away, it'll know that I've moved away. And again, as I move closer, yep, it knows that I'm there. Um, at the moment, that's just doing a little bit of a light dance, nothing more than a little bit of fun and a little bit of bling. Um, but uh, given I've had to work out uh, exactly how to use this particular sensor and all the logic and everything else around that, the kind of numbers it produces, then I came up with a model that says I'm away and, or, or I've just arrived and then I can feed that into such as lights at the moment, but uh, that could be anything that I want in the future. So as this uh, whole software project has grown with time, um, I started out initially with just wanting to do a single hand gesture controlling motor speed and that's all it was going to do, but then more and more ideas occurred, um, necessitating a graphical user interface. That's what this uh, little box here in front of us is. So we've got a few different options here. For example, this is the drop down list of all the things that you can change simply by waving your hand. Um, it will tell us um, statistics on the next page of how far we've gone in terms of total ball distance travel and all kinds of statistical updates happen there. This will tell us information about the lights and what we're currently doing with them, how bright they are, intervals, patterns, all that kind of stuff. Uh, this is the list of tasks, which happens to change every fraction of a second or so according to whatever's happening in the world. And uh, this is the list of events that are happening over time, up to 2,230 events at the moment since we first started. A heck of a lot going on, much more than you think. Um, these are the different uh, connections so that I can make sure everything's physically wired up okay. And uh, then we've got some additional parameters here sitting in the back, some additional switches and parameters and things that I can, uh, I can configure outside of the software. So I don't have to change the software to change the behavior. I can put these things in external text files, uh, such as this configuration file that you see here, and uh, change the numbers and fine tune it. Uh, without having to change the software. So it's, it's very, very powerful. Um, the um, last item down here is this um, wonderful concept uh, called scripts. Um, scripts are the ultimate control. So whereas we can have a single hand gesture go up and down to change a single parameter, such as motor speed or lights and so on. Um, the scripting language that I created has infinite abilities to fine-tune the behavior to do exactly what we want. So they come up as uh, selectable lists 
that you can see here um, and that you can see what one of these looks like. For example, here's a thing that says I want to have a slow, easy mood. So it gives us a time frame, it gives us a lighting range to work with and so on. And then the, the whole system will then create uh, this whole effect for us as we've described. This is something that you could never do in, in software because you'd be running around in circles trying to think of every possibility. But with one single facility, um, I've given it infinite ability. So this is, is a set of commands that says uh, I want nice and slow and easy. And uh, this set of commands, uh, when uh, run, will give it a whole different <laughs> vibe. Uh, lights will go really high, things will speed up, uh, and so on. And, uh, and we've got actually four different time frames that all add on to each other. And so it'll just repeat this in a cycle, because that's the commands that we've put into it. So um, the actual full uh, list of commands that are available is, is quite extensive. We've got the repeating patterns, we've got LED patterns, uh, we've got colours and we've got lift speeds, intensities and everything else can all be varied with time. We simply say we, this won't change from this to this over this time frame. It'll calculate everything and do it all for you and then I can save those things off with small script files and those things will appear in, in, in a named list. So all I've got to do is tap, select and I've got instantly customised. Beautiful. It behaves amazingly well. So uh, last but not least, uh, what does uh, software actually look like for this particular thing that I've been doing? I've got up to four and a half thousand lines of very uh, compact, detailed and, and, and highly tested code. Um, if you start out with just a simple connection, such as just a motor and sending the command or have a sensor and reading some values from it, you know, that can be done in six or seven lines, very, very simple and straightforward. Um, but building something that is industrial strength, commercial grade, uh, integrated and so on is, is where things really uh, expand. You've got to be very formalised in terms of your data structures and in terms of your coding layouts and everything else. And that's why, you know, it's four and a half thousand lines of code to, to do all the things that you just saw in just a few, uh, few minutes. So to give you an idea of what four and a half thousand lines of code looks like, um, Every single thing here has been done hand by one by one by hand. Uh, nothing here is generated. Everything gets uh, thought of and tested out, go through data structures and everything else and tables and everything else that supports the, the definition of the, the state of the system. And then we go through this whole section here that's all to do with that scripting language that I talked about. This is all the software that allows you to type in commands and for it to recognize what it is that you want to do and for it to do it. And so, you know, that's got to happen somehow. And it, this is all the code that handles that. So it turns your English and commands into stuff that the machine understands and does. So <laughs> you can see it goes for some time. And then we move into section by section. This is part of what you call well-organized code. You've got different sections for different things. We've got things here that utilities and support functions, all the calculations and all the bits and pieces that everyone needs to, to call upon from different sections of the code. All these utilities uh, all sit in one area, so it's easy to remember, it's easy to go back to, easy to expand. Um, and then uh, finally we reach the bottom of that section. What are we up to now? Still going in the utilities. There's a lot of it. I told you there's four and a half thousand lines and growing. <laughs> it goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. This whole language is a new one to me. Python, so I've had to learn that new language. Um, device handling, okay, so this is how you get down to the syntax of turning lights off and on, turning motors to go this way or that way, and so on. It all has to be thought about and coded up. Nothing happens by accident. So that's all the device handling. And then we've got these things called handlers. So this is the, the key to having this act independently and autonomously. You can wave your hand any time you like. At the same time, the ball might roll down the track and throw a switch, and the same time something else might happen. It's got to be able to run without you knowing what it's going to do next because it just simply works on its own, and it will act and react according to these things. Okay, so the warm-up sections that it has, this is all the warm-up code, give everything a run, initialising, devices, tables, 
classes, data structures. It's all got to come from somewhere. Still doing initialization of tables. There's a lot of stuff in here. And the graphical user interface. Again, all layouts have got to get defined and they've got to be given a structure and then they need to be given references so that I can put things into different fields of the graphical user interface. Um, again, you know, it's got to happen somehow. So this is all the code that does that. Usually when you see something that's simple and easy to use, that means there's a lot of work going on behind it. And finally, we're down into the running of the system, the sort of core, if you like, and where it branches out from there. And it can go through and warm the system up and run it for us. So that's it. That's 4,500 lines of code, or nearly 4,700 lines of code as we speak. Um, so I hope you, that gives you some idea of what this beast looks like. Um, it'll be a fair while before I move out of the, the prototyping, into the prototyping stage from the proof of concept, but I'm happy with the proof of concept. Uh, everything is working famously um, and I can rely on it to work uh, for hundreds of hours uh, that I need it to work so that when I do on the next stage and actually build something around it, um, it won't be a waste of time because I know that the underlying parts to that point have worked perfectly. So that's it in a nutshell. hope you enjoyed a quick uh, look around.